Washington State's newest AVA, the Waluk Slope, has one of the hottest climates in the state and is a good example of local terroir within a larger region. This area encompasses a huge gravel bar formed during the Ice Age floods and is currently planted with 5,200 acres of vineyards. The grapevines must be continually irrigated since the water quickly drains through the sandy soils and there is no precipitation during the hot growing season. We have the huge feature, which is about a thousand feet high and 30 miles long, was laid down by uh, one of the huge bodies of flood water that was coming down through the Channel Scabland system. Though that gravel bar has had a sheet of sand, essentially a thin uh, area of sand dunes spread over the top, uh, really, really warm growing conditions. Some of the warmest uh, uh, area, uh, one of the warmest areas in the state. And this gravel bar that goes all the way um, for 30 miles was built up over the, over the outburst flood interval from about 20,000 to 15,000 years ago. Perhaps the, one of the largest alluvial fans in the world. This area that I'm sitting exemplifies our two main themes for the development of Washington terroirs and soils so well. Uh, water the, from the giant floods that carried gravel, sand, silt into our area, and, and we have the boulders to, to show that. And the windblown sand that's at my feet, we can actually see the ripple marks in the sand here. Wind is such a constant in this area that in the 15,000 years since the outburst floods ended, uh, the winds that scour through this area, particularly in the spring and fall, have picked up huge quantities of the of the glacial outburst flood sand and silt and spread it all over our areas to create sheets of, of dune sand over the gravel bars. Vineyards on the Waluk Slope are producing distinct and exceptional quality grapes. Winemakers are very excited about the soft, silky tannins in their Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot wines. On the western end of the Waluk Slope sits Catherine Leone Vineyard. Managers, like Butch Milbrandt, deal with the most challenging environmental conditions of any wine region in the state. So there's, there's quite a few things that go into growing the fruit, you know, it's keeping the canopy open on one side, shaded on the other side, water control, you know, it's, uh, and then we do cluster thinning later on, we come through and, and thin the clusters back to try to meet a target range for tonnage because you don't want to overproduce because it'll, it'll diminish the flavors in the fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, the soils here could be very sandy, very gravelly, really droughty soils. You've got a really hot site. How's that show up in the fruit? Well, like I said, it does have black fruit flavors and, and that more heat and more ripening time will bring that about. If you, uh, if you have fruit growing in a little cooler climate, a little heavier soils, then you'll get more raspberry flavors, cherry flavors, you know, you don't, doesn't get the depth of flavors that you can get in a really stressful climb, such as, such as this with these types of soils. Right. We're proud of our vineyards and we want people to know that they are good, good sites for grapes and it has to come through in the wine. And if the wine gets good awards and people like it, then it reflects back on the quality of the, of the vineyard. The wine really expresses the region in that it has a lot of fruit and it has a lot of uh, maturity about it. And I think that if you look at that wine uh, compared with other regions of the world, you're going to be, uh, I think, pleasantly surprised by the quality.